Oh, I'm just going to video more. Hello, cheap skaters, and welcome. We're back. I have a voice. Can you hear me? Makes a nice change from being quiet. So I'm still a bit croaky, but not as bad as I was, thank goodness. So we're back for Tuesday night. Feels like forever since I've been here and talked to you all. So I was thinking, oh, did I promise to do something that I've missed because I could not remember for the life of me and I had a bit of a disaster yesterday morning when I was trying to fix something on my computer and I actually deleted a whole heap of files. So I spent the last two days trying to retrieve as many of them as I could. I've got about half of them back, thank goodness. Anyway, we've been talking about money saving, you know, making meals stretch further and so that we can save our money and get more bang for our buck and whatever. And we talked about meatless meals. And I'm just wondering, has anyone tried any meatless meals? Did anyone try to make the nut meat rolls? Any Victorians pop into Not Quite Right last week when it was $2 a can, that is such a good price. You can be sure I was there just after 8.30 on, on um, Monday. Monday morning, I think I was there. Mm -hmm. Just after 8.30, cleared the shelf. Trust me, $2 a can. We use it. So nobody else seemed to be buying it. So I took it. It's all safe, safely in the stockpile. Now, on that note, for NQR folks, a um, email just popped into my inbox. Let me just bring it up with some really good specials for Victorians who have NQR handy. Let me, huh, I had it here. Um, that start, start tomorrow, 28th. Yeah. The one that caught my eye was um, Old El Paso, they're called Nar Chips. I guess they're across the, the little round corn chips that you use for dipping, but they're great for nachos. Now, this is a 200 gram pack, so that's a super big pack for $1.50. If you don't make pita chips to use for nachos or dipping or whatever, that's a fantastic price. The other thing that caught my eye was um, the Praise Delish or Deli style. Um, mayos and aioli for $1.50. Oh, ooh, Hannah likes those. Two litres of Crisco sunflower oil for $4. Now, that's half price. That's a great price. Now, the only problem is it's not in um, a dark bottle. It's in a clear plastic bottle. So keep it in a dark cupboard just so it will last that little bit longer. Light, light and air are not friends of oils, any oils. So if you can keep them in a dark cupboard until you're ready to use it, that's a good thing. And the other thing I found, oh yeah, the um, Olive Grove um, margarine spread for 275 for a 500 gram tub wasn't so bad. And there was something else down here. What is it? Oh no, up here, up the top. Um, sorry, you don't have it. Proactive. Anyone uses the Flora Proactive for three dollars fifty? That's fifty percent off too. So they're the things that appeal to me because I'm not interested in the chocolates, the lollies, the nuts, and things just yet. Starting October, I'll be looking for those things. Actually, starting mid September, I'll start looking for those things because they'll be coming on sale for grand final time. But if you don't have, um, if you're not subscribed to the NQR newsletter, you can get it, just jump online to nqr.com.au, I think that's it, and get their special sent to you each week. They usually put out two um, emails a week with different specials in, and they're you know, sometimes pretty good to um, fill your pantry with decent food at a reasonable price. Okay, so how I make my veggies last for the month. I have a pumpkin here. It's actually a half a pumpkin. It was a whole pumpkin, but we've used half. I have a bag of carrots. I've got some apples. I've got big bowls of apples, three with bowls of apples. These apples 
um, were classed as seconds, which means there might be a spot on the skin or the, a little bruise or something somewhere. So they were really cheap. So that lot cost me $6.50. So I was more than happy with that. Now they're going to be turned into pineapple tomorrow. You can tell what I'll be doing in the morning. Um, and I will bottle it for the rest of the year for apple pies and apple crumbles and apple cobbler and apple tea cake and whatever else we can use for apples. Why? Well, apple Because I like it. No, why? Because what did you get? Because I got my pressure canner at last, folks. A couple of weeks ago, just over a week ago, about 10 days ago, um, an email popped into my inbox. And some of you may know I've been saving up for a pressure canner for years. I wanted to save up for it. I wanted to buy it myself. But of course, being, and most of you will know what it's like, you're a wife, you're a mum, you're a mother, you're a, you know, somebody's friend or neighbour or whatever, you save up and save up, something crops up and so you use that money to cover whatever it is that's cropped up. Now that's happened to me a couple of times. And the pressure canner I had my eye on, they've actually dropped in price. It was hideously expensive when I first started looking. Over the years, they've come down in price. Anyway, it popped into my inbox. It was on sale for $179 with a dozen free green ball jars, the big green ball jars. They're so pretty. And so Wayne said, with the way our dollar's going and because it's an imported product, it's just going to get more expensive and take me longer to save up, so just buy it. So I did. And it was delivered on Friday, Thursday. Can't remember. It was delivered Monday last week. Monday it must have been. Monday. Delivered last Monday. And trust me, I did not feel, I did not feel, I was dying to play with it, but I did not feel like it. Anyway, I had a little play. I made some tomato sauce. I did my slow cooker tomato sauce, pasta sauce, and then um, bottled it the next day. Easy peasy wish I'd done it years ago so now I'm looking forward to doing all sorts of things with it but mostly things that can't be water bathed so this the high protein things or the low acid things that can't be water bathed so yes they will go in the pressure canner anyway storing fruits and veg look when you buy your fruit and veg try and buy the freshest you can now if you're stuck and limited to a particular green grocer or supermarket, then you're stuck. But find out when they get their deliveries of their fresh stuff. And it's usually, if they're a bigger supermarket, it will be every second day, roughly. If it's a medium-sized supermarket, maybe twice a week, the smaller supermarkets will even, should even do twice a week. They'll get one big load and then a smaller top-up load, usually. Of course, if you are remote, that's going to change and I can't help you. You will need to ask your store when they get their deliveries. I know um, Weepa waits till the barge comes in, the barge that comes in with the big load on a Thursday and everyone flocks to Woolworths in Weepa. You see them, it's like seagulls on chips to get the fresh fruit and veg when it comes in, when the barge comes in, they get a smaller top up Monday, I think, when the other barge comes in. But it's um, interesting to see how that happens. So if you live remote, you're going to have to work that out yourself. But pretty much capital cities, that's how it works. It just does. Now, I'm blessed with Pellegrinos, which is you know, almost within walking distance. If I absolutely had to, I could walk, drag my granny trolley and walk and get my fruit and veg but I drive past a couple of times a week anyway, so I just call in as I'm going past. I do the bulk of our fruit and veg shopping once a month. So once a month I will buy a whole pumpkin, I'll buy a big bag of carrots, I will buy um, onions if we need them, although I try to get the onions in the 10 kilo bags and freeze them. Uh, what Sweet potato, um, fruit that will last, apples, oranges, mandarins, that will last a long time so that I don't have to keep running back. And I try during the, when it's roughly coming up to fruit and veg shopping day, I start to look 
for the specials so that I can pick the best time to go and get what I need. Because I hate pay, oh, I just hate paying full price. Now, during summer we grow a lot of what we eat. And normally in winter we do too. This winter I don't have a garden at all um, for different reasons. And I can tell you that I have really missed it. I've missed going, oh, my cauliflower sounds good for tea, and being able to run out to the garden and get it. Or, you know, oh, raised cabbage would be nice. No, can't get it, didn't buy it, we miss out. So if you can possibly grow some of what you eat, it's well worth it, not just from, you know, the price point of view, but from the sheer convenience of knowing that if you want broccoli, it's in the garden, you just run out and chop off a head. And if you chop it off and leave the you know, leave the fair whack growing, it'll regrow and get little broccoli florets that you can keep harvesting. So that's well worth doing. In summer, my fruit and veg shopping isn't as big, but I have the problem of trying to keep the produce that we grow fresh until we're ready to eat it. So there's a few different things that I do. And the biggest thing is prep it as soon as it comes home. So when I do my fruit and veg shop, my big fruit and veg shop, and everything comes in, it might take me an hour, but I chop it, I peel it, I chop it, I dice it, I bag it and put it in the fridge and it's ready to go. Saves a bit of time while I'm getting a meal ready but it also makes me aware of what has to be used and used first and what can be put to the back of the fridge to come forward later on. So it works like that. I found that we sort of have a routine. So things like pumpkin and carrots and potatoes and sweet potato that keep for a long time tend to get used in the second half of the month, used more in the second half of the month the veggies that don't keep so well, like your um, celery, your um, broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, they're the things that we use the first half of the month. And we get those used up before we start on the other things. And ditto for the fruit. Apples will be the second half of the month. If we have soft fruits, particularly in summer, if we have nectarines or peaches or apricots or plums, they get eaten first. And then the oranges and bananas will be next. And we don't worry about black banana skins because black banana skins don't mean bananas not good. Anyway, so some of the things that I use to keep the fruit and veg fresh, you've all heard me talk about my fresh and crisp bags. Well, this is how I buy them. I buy them in a six pack mainly because it's cheaper and because they're getting harder and harder to get. Woolworths and Coles are not cooperating with our smaller Australian manufacturers people. That's my political statement for the day. Do something about it. So I like these fresh and crisp bags. Now, I, I call them gel bags because when I first started using them 15 odd years ago, that's what they were called, fresh and crisp gel bags. Now they're just called fresh and crisp keeps fruit and vegetables fresh for up to three weeks. Well, sometimes longer, depending on how you prep it. They're a great thing. You can buy them not at Coles anymore, unfortunately. Woolworths do stock them. Uh, but go online. Look them up and buy them online. They are often on sale for half price online, and that's when you can stock up with them now. They come in multiple sizes, so you get big ones that will take giant ones like this, Pumpkin just came out of this great big one. Huge big ones like this. Down to teeny tiny ones for little, I've got a little one here, but teeny tiny ones for just a few things. This box isn't open, is that right? Mm -hmm. oh, let's see. Can you open that for me, please? I think my fingers won't work. Just a few things. I wash them. I turn them inside out. When I take the fruit out of them or the veggies out of them, I wash them. So I turn them inside out, I just toss them in the soaker bucket. There's the smallest one. So it's great for just, you know, grapes, a few things like, little things like that, a few tomatoes, 
it's good for one head of broccoli or a half a cauliflower, that sort of thing. They're a good size. Mm. So back to the when I finish with them, they need to be cleaned. I turn them inside out. I put them, I have a bucket in the laundry for soaking. So everything that needs to be soaked goes in there. They get soaked so that anything that's stuck to them will come off and then into the towel wash they will go. Hang them on the line to dry, bring them inside, fold them up, and I reuse them over and over and over and over and over until they fall apart, literally until they fall apart. They last for months and months and months. So I consider them an investment in my food storage and I don't know what I do without them these days. Now, I also have a whole heap of this stuff. This is Tupperware. Now, this I've had for mm, over 30 years, well over 30 years, this little one. I do have the bigger one that goes with it. And then I have the other updated versions of them to the narrow one and the wider one that I use all the time. They're really good. But they're expensive to buy new. So keep your eye out at garage sales, car boot sales, trash and treasure markets, op, shop. op shops. Hannah's got a great collection of Tupperware, almost as much as mine, just about. And she's bought it all from the op shop. And I think the most expensive thing was about $4. So, well worth it. And op shops are really good for, I was going to say, the vintage pieces, the older Tupperware items. That is really good. No offence to Tupperware, but some of their newer stuff just doesn't seem to do the job. But these things are brilliant. Now, this little one, people used to use it for spring onions, and it is ideal for spring onions and little things like that. Um, okay, strawberries. Um it's not quite big enough for a whole head of celery, but if you prep your celery, it fits in there. A half a head will fit in there perfectly. So you can use them for all sorts of things. So Tupperware is another good thing if you have it. I am gradually switching over from Tupperware, though, to these wonderful things, and these are my lock and lock containers. These things are hideously expensive and I don't, I don't think I've ever found one in an op shop, but they're still relatively new. I did get a lot on sale from JCPenney, which is obviously the American store. Um, they had, well, they're so much cheaper over there, and then they had them on 50 cents. So even paying with a conversion rate and paying postage, it was still around only about two thirds of the cost of buying them new here. So I did get some from overseas. I like these because my fingers are starting to seize up on me and they're easy to lift and easy to close. I can close them and I can open them really easily. So I like the lock and locks. Now they also come with a rack like the Tupperware containers for the bottom um to keep the moisture up or keep your food up out of any moisture and condensation that falls down because water will rot your food trust me when i say this water will rot your food if you have food even in a, in a tupperware container in a lock and lock even in a, a fresh and crisp bag and there's condensation in there the food will rot faster so you need to keep it dry. And there's a few ways you can do that. With your containers, it's as simple as um, I put a dishcloth in the base instead of the racks because the, the racks take up space, can't get as much in. So I put a dishcloth in the base and then every day when I open the fridge to do whatever we're doing for tea, I just take the lid off and give it a wipe with a dishcloth, give it away until it's dry and put it back on. At the end of the week when I'm doing the um, sorting to see what goes into the mystery meal, most of it's dry. So water will rot your food. Now on that note, I'll just wait one sec. 
this is my this is my tomato that I'm going to plant. But sea tomatoes have that little pond, little dip there where the stalk was. Store your tomatoes upside down. Because even if you're drying your containers, the condensation will still gather in that little um, pond there and it will rot. Store your tomatoes upside down, it runs off, it'll go down into the dishcloth. Problem solved. Now, it really annoys me when I go into a supermarket or a green grocer and I see them spraying the fruit and veg. Yeah, it looks lovely and fresh in store. You get it home and the next day it's rotten and that's why, because it's wet. It does not need to be wet. Water will rot your food. Uh, so, yes. Now, normally I would have celery, I would have um, cauliflower and broccoli, I would have... Mm, summer I have always have cabbage to prep and put away. Today, because I haven't done the fruit, fruit and veg shop, I thought about running up to Pellegrino's, but it's really not the right time for me to do it. So I just have the pumpkin to show you and the carrots, but this is all I do with the carrots. All I do oops, is top and tail them. Just like so. Do the whole bag, and I will do the whole bag. Since it's a new bag, I just open it. Top and tail them. And I keep those little bits like this because they're quite clean. They can go into the freezer to go into the stock pot when I'm making stock. Now, these are nice, clean carrots. They don't need to be peeled. If they were straight from the garden, they would need to be scrubbed and possibly peeled. But these are fine. So they don't need to be peeled. Another job I don't like doing. don't need to do it all the time. So these will just go into a green bag and get popped in the fridge. Now, in my fridge, I don't have the crisper drawers. Or actually, in this fridge, I do have the crisper drawers, but I don't use them for the fruit and veg. I use them to store the cheese and butter. There we go. That's all I do to get carrots. Now, these carrots should be good for um, four to five weeks. I know the bag, the boxes in the bag, say up to three weeks, four to five weeks. All I do is twist it. And where's my clip? Have these clips that come from Ikea. The first lot came from Ikea, the second lot came from Aldi. I've, now they're everywhere. And that just goes into the fridge. I go into the fridge and as I need it, need a carrot or two carrots, I just open it, take them out. If, the, um, if there's condensation in the bag, when the bags are sealed like this, they're not quite airtight, so there's generally not condensation in the bag. I'll take them out, put them in a new bag and give that one a wash. Otherwise, they're fine. Now, this gets put into the stock pot. Here we go. Got lots of bits here to show you tonight. I'm very excited. I'm very topic like this, okay? Now, pumpkin is not grandma's cat. No. No. My mum had a, had a beautiful ginger tom called pumpkin. I'm watching my hands. I try to cut it. I try to cut the pumpkin with the um, grooves, but mm, sometimes. Now this one I've already cut into. First thing I do is scoop out the seeds, and to do that, I just use I just use a spoon and get it in and scrape as much of it as I can out. Just like so, pop it in a stock pot, right, and that's it. Then I cut it into pieces. Now, sometimes I peel it, sometimes I don't. If I'm going, you should be, if it's the pumpkin I'm chopping up for roasting, I don't peel it. If it's pumpkin that I know I'm going to use for soup, I peel it. But again, with my rickety old fingers, I just wobble through it and cut it into smallish pieces. 
so that they are, whoops, there you go, easier to, um, easier for me to handle. So you need to do what works best for you. And if I have way more of the boys home, I will get them to do it for me because pumpkin's tough. Now, this is a bought pumpkin. It is pretty cheap, 89 cents or something a kilo. That's cheap enough anyway. They can be our roasting pieces. Now, to store the roasting pieces so they will last, because we all know pumpkin will go slimy fairly quickly. My secret is corn flour. Here's my course, this corn flour ice cream. Corn flour. Just had a subtle thought. The other day I got the containers muddled. Okay, corn flour. So I just dust them, dust the pieces with corn flour. Just lightly. No great rhyme or reason or whatever. Just lightly so that the cover the corn flour will absorb any condensation from it. Just give them a bounce and then into the bag they go. They will keep for easily three to four weeks in the food like this. Now I showed you earlier in the year how I vacuum seal the veggies in packs for when we're going camping. That works really well. But for just home, regular home use, that's my roasting pumpkin. As easy as that. And it will keep for weeks like that. So it's just a little bit. And I do use the sifter because I've tried just sprinkling it over with the spoon and I am too heavy handed for that. So just like that. That's how I treat pumpkin. Celery, I chop the leaves off and they get straight into a green bag because I use those for soups and stocks and gravies. Sometimes I will dry them. Sometimes I will just put them in the freezer ready to go straight into the stock pot. The rest of it, I chop the um, root off and it goes out to the compost, break the sticks apart, give them a wash, give them a rinse and make sure they're dry, cut them in half and I put them into um, a green bag, close it up and pop them in the fridge. <sighs> cauliflower and broccoli, take the, I take the leaves off the cauliflower, I cut it into the florets already, same with the broccoli, cut it into the florets so that I don't have to worry about doing that when I'm trying to throw them in the pot to cook and then they go into a green bag and just get pegged, pegged over. If you don't have um, clips like this, Ordinary clothes pigs do the job just as well. Um, and you, everyone's bound to have clothes pigs, whereas you may not necessarily have these, which is fine. You don't need them. Look for the alternatives. It does the same job. Clothes pigs work wonders. <sighs> Something I was going to say. Yes? Um, do you wash the corn flour off before you cook it? No. Oh, for the roasting? No. Well, it goes into a pan... What I do with my veggies, I think I've showed you, I just toss them in and I drizzle them with the oil and give them a toss and I just chuck it. Whoops, don't know what that was. A bit of pumpkin, was it? Mm -hmm. um, oh, okay. Um, I just um, toss them in oil and put them in the oven. It just, I don't know, it cooks off, comes off. Nobody's complained. I've been doing it for years. So, no, I don't wash the coffee. You could if you wanted to. Then you'd have to dry the pumpkin though to roast it. Um, have you tried wrapping celery in foil to keep? I've never tried wrapping celery in foil to keep. I don't use a lot of foil because I, personal preference, to me foil leaves a taste in the food. So it's more, if I use foil, it's more for covering the top of a dish if it's not finished cooking or I don't need it to brown. It might be potato bake or something like that. I'll cover the top of it with foil, but I don't like wrapping the food in foil and I don't like um, storing things in the fridge in foil. 
to me it gives the food a metallic taste i don't like it but i believe it will keep celery fresh but again it's the wrapping and unwrapping where a bag or a container is so much more convenient than trying to not tear foil each time um can you eat the leaves of a beetroot plant yes you can eat the leaves of beetroot plant you can treat them as um salad greens if they're very fresh and young or you can steam them like you would silver beet or spinach yeah you can it's not a common thing um, in Australia anyway, but, yeah, you can eat the leaves off beetroot. And I believe they're probably, it's probably becoming trendy in some of the um, fancier restaurants to have beetroot leaves on your salad as a, as a garnish. Um, one more thing with storing fruits and veg. With your tomato... If it's cut, I have one of these little duva wacky what's it? So I got it off eBay. You can get them anywhere now, but I've had this one for a gazillion years because I got it off eBay. Once you've cut your tomato, if you pop it into that, it will keep it fresh. It won't dry out. And you're not likely to lose it because it hangs off your fridge shelf or your fridge door. Ditto for onions. If you've used a half an onion, it works really well and your onion will stay moist and and fresh for oh, easily two weeks um, in this. Uh, the same for um, garlic. If you've only you've peeled a clove of garlic and you've only used half of it or something, a little container like that will keep it fresh for a long time. Alternatively, with your garlic, just drop it into some oil and have garlic flavoured oil. That works too. Hmm. Yeah. So... One more thing I wanted to tell you, and I can't for the life of me remember what it was. Storing fruits and vegetables. <sighs> Rotate them. Rotate them. Remember that, you know, if you've done a big shop, there will be fruit and veg at the back. So I put the stuff that lasts longest at the back and the stuff that's going to go off first at the front so that we use it. But each week I still go through the fridge and see you know, stuff might be starting to look a bit sad or wrinkly or whatever, that's what we need to use up because I loathe throwing money in the bin. I know um, we've talked about how much money people throw away in food waste, but just, just on fruit alone, the average household throws away $500 worth of fruit each year. So that will be apples that have gone mushy because I haven't used them or grapes that have gone brown and wrinkly or whatever, bananas that have turned black and they won't use them in a cake or whatever, $500 of just fruit into the bin each year. I can't afford to throw $500 in the bin and I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't take $500 out of my bank account and just put it in the bin and hope the garbo enjoys his bonus. I wouldn't do it. So... I couldn't afford to do it, so I won't. That made me really conscious of how much waste and potential um, dollar value goes into the bin. And I consider composting too. Really, the stuff that goes in our compost bin is the stuff that we do not eat, that we can't eat. So, like I said, with the carrots, I don't peel them, I just wash them. Um, potatoes will get scrubbed. I like the potato skins. The only time I peel potatoes is when I'm mashing them. Um, otherwise, they get a really good scrub so they're clean and they're fine. I think when, when the, the skin um, crisps up beautifully for baked potatoes and chips. Do we have jacket potatoes for dinner tomorrow night? Oh, we probably have jacket potatoes for dinner tomorrow night. We've got some big potatoes, yes. Oh, sorry, I'm talking. It was completely off topic. Now you know we're having jacket potatoes for dinner tomorrow night. Meal plan change. <sighs> the joys. See this? The joys of coming into our home live. The things that happen. Welcome to my world, folks. 
little things, it only takes a little while to prep your fruit and veg for the week or the month if you do a big shop and then it's done. If you work outside your home or you have little children or you just don't like cooking like me, getting it all over and done with is such a time saver and that can save you money too because, again, even if you know what you're going to have for dinner, if you come home and you're exhausted and you've got babies climbing on your legs and older kids asking for help for homework and someone else complaining that they need stuff for school the next day and someone else is going to be late for music or sport or whatever, it's too much and you just it's so tempting to just go, enough, fish and chips it is, even though you're prepared for it. So doing as much ahead as you can saves you money as well as time and it saves your sanity. Trust me, I have learned from experience. It's a really good thing to do a, spend a little time, a little time to save a lot of time. A little effort to save a lot of effort. It works wonders. I'm just going to have a drink because I'm starting to get a bit croaky. Um, do you freeze fruit and veg in portion sizes? Oh. Um, so when I'm doing onions, for instance, I'll buy the 10 kilo bag of onions. Half of those onions are grated. Now, I don't stand there with the grater. I put it through the food processor. Half of those, so five kilos is grated. I measure those out in half a cup. I use my trusty green measuring cup half a cup into a Ziploc bag and they get frozen like that. I do a quarter of them in rings and again, I just do a handful. I don't measure that, I just, that looks enough. Into a Ziploc bag and I freeze those and the rest of them get peeled and frozen whole in packs of four to go with our roast because they become roast veggies then. That's how I deal with um, on, uh, yeah, onions. Apples, for instance, normally these would be stewed and portioned out in two cup lots in Ziploc bags and frozen, um, as were plums, peaches, nectarines, apricots, all the summer fruits were like that before I um, had the pressure canner. Um, I would either bottle them, hot water bath them, or I would stew them for pies and cobblers and crumbles and freeze them in the two cup portions. Bananas, if they're starting to look a bit black in the fruit bowl, usually they will get eaten, but I do tend to snaffle them off quickly and wrap them in twos in the freezer because two is enough for a banana cake usually. So um, if that's what you mean by portioning them in single serves or in, in portions, then yeah, I do. Um, again, it just a little effort now saves a lot of effort later on. For me, anyway, it works. Yeah. Um, where in the fridge do you store your fruit and veggies if the butter and dairy is in the fruit container? Okay. Our fridge, we've got the crisper drawers at the bottom. There's a shelf on top. On that shelf, I have two boxes, and in those boxes goes the bags of fruit and veg, and they sit side by side on the top there. I, In our older fridge, we didn't use the crisper drawers at all. I tossed those um, when we got the fridge. I tossed those, and my Tupperware containers fit, fitted perfectly. I could fit two, four, eight Tupperware containers, the veggie containers, across the bottom of the fridge. So that's where I stored the fruit and veg then. With this new fridge, new fridge, we've had it for 15 years, but the newer fridge um, is a different shape inside. So I had to do some jiggling around and that's why cheese and butter went down the bottom and the fruit and veg got moved up onto the, to the shelf. Yeah. Otherwise, then the next shelf, I keep eggs on one side and the rest of the shelf is usually the things that we are eating at the moment, like 
might be the leftovers from tea tonight for lunch tomorrow or pizza bases ready for this or whatever. And then the top shelf has the condiments. The condiments. So down the left side, I have uh, beetroot, pineapple and pickled onions in containers. Then I have a container and in that's the relishes and the jams and things like that. But on the other side of it is the butter and cream and sour cream the slots in down there sounds much more organized than it is trust me priya would like to know do you use the dehydrator when you store the sliced onions oh no priya i don't dehydrate the onions um i just freeze them fresh so i measure them sliced onions hang handful trust trusty handful into a ziploc bag close it and then I put all those Ziploc bags into a bigger Ziploc bag and put it in the freezer. I don't have any issue, there's no smell or anything. I know people complain that if they freeze fresh onions, they get the smell through their freezer. I've never had that, but I do double bag them. And then those bags, the onion bags are onion bags for life till they fall apart. So they get... Um, washed, dried and put in the drawer until the next time I'm processing onions and I use those bags just for the onions. So I do reuse the bags. They're not a single use either. You right? Yeah. Okay. Um, Kerry said, did you get yourself a pressure camera? Yes, Kerry, I did. Didn't you, didn't you see me doing the happy dance around Melbourne? I, I did get the pressure canner. Presto 21 litre, 21 quart? 20 23 litre, quart. 23 quart. Presto, yes. Very excited. I've used it once. I was nervous. I was so nervous. But now I'll be doing apples tomorrow and I'm, I'm, I'm just itching to get my summer garden. I wish, wish it was all grown now so I could start doing all the really good stuff. I will be doing um, beans probably over the weekend, processing um, kidney beans and black beans. I um, uh, garden pat off our off our forum. Um, she pressure cans her beans. She puts a half a cup of beans into a quart jar, fills it to the um, bottom of the neck with water, and then processes it at 11 pounds for 75 minutes. Beans, we, we use so many beans in our tacos. I add beans to everything, and it's a meal stretcher on their own. I add beans to just about everything. So we go through a lot of beans. So the soaking and the boiling, it was just so time consuming. Even in pressure cooker, it seemed to take forever. So I can't wait to try that and see how they go. Yeah, so all right i think i've run out of run out of i've run out of warmth i'm starting to lean um if there's no more questions about how we store fruit and veg it's pretty easy i can tell you the soft fruits usually last mm, five to ten days so things like the grapes um peaches, nectarines, that sort of plums will last five to ten days. The harder fruits last for weeks. And we all know that if you put apples and oranges in the fridge, they will last a long time. I keep them, some in the fridge, and bring them out as we use them. Um, oh, with the tomatoes. Again, in summer, in winter, they're usually in a bowl on the bench. But in the summer, I keep them in the fridge and bring them out, bring two or three out sort of each day and that's enough for us to use them because they taste so much better at room temperature than they do straight from the fridge. But otherwise, that's how I keep our fruit and veg for a month or more. What jars do you use for can? Okay, I have a selection of jars for my canning. Um, I have Fowler's Vicola jars, some, some were my mother's, some were my husband's grandmother's, some were my mother-in-law's, not that I think she ever used them, but she had them, 
Um, <laughs> Anna's laughing because she knows her granny didn't cook. Um, some, my father-in-law picked up off the side of the road and hard rubbish for me for the Fowler's jars. And they are all the old Fowler's jars, so they're the nice, thick, really heavy glass. I have some of those. I have a lot of ball jars that I've collected over the years as they've been on sale. And then last week I lucked out and got a whole stack of ball jars for a dollar a jar. So I got 60. Wasn't there 50 cents? 50 cents a jar. 50 cents a jar. I got 60 anyway. So I thought, oh my gosh, that's a lot of jars. It is a lot of jars. Now, um, otherwise, I have been known to um, recycle pasta sauce jars, you know, the Legos jars, um, the salsa jars. I recycle for salsa or pickles, um, mm -hmm. chutneys, things like that. With those jars, I always check the lid because it's got the little rubber ring around the inside of the lid. I always check that because you can buy new lids. You don't have to buy the jar lid. You can just buy new lids. Um, there's a place in Caram Downs. Uh, what's it called? Oz. Oh, sorry, it's gone. Mason Jars Australia. Oh, yeah. Mason, Mason Jars Australia or Oz Mason Jars or something. Um, I've got it bookmarked anyway. Where you can just buy lids if you need to. So if you've got a whole stack of Legos jars and you need those lids, you can just buy the lids. There's places all over Australia that will just sell you the lids, same for your sauce bottles, anything like that. I Jam jars I collect as I see them at the op shops. Usually they're about 20 cents each. 20, to 20 cents each is about as much as I'll pay for a jam jar from an op shop. But, yeah, so my jars come from all over the place. We get them Kmart ones. Yeah, we have some Kmart ones. They're great for pickles and chutneys and jar, um, jams and for gifting spice mixes. They are really, yeah, the jars are really cheap, but they're pretty. They're pretty jars. It's important to have a pretty jar. If you're going to gift it, you've got to have a pretty jar. So, yeah, so my jars come from all over the place. Um, I ran out of the jars for pickles. I've, Few months ago so I put word out amongst um, family and friends that I needed pickle jars and Maureen sent me some and I think Wendy brought me some, Pamela brought me some, I had jars, then I had jars everywhere which was really good because you've got to have a good supply of jars, yeah. All right, there's no more questions, boss? No. No more questions, folks? Okay, thank you very much for coming back after a week's absence. It's been, it felt really strange. Oh, here I am again. Uh, if you have any questions, pop them in the comments um, underneath the video and I'll do my best to answer them for you or use the contact us form on our website and I'll do my best to answer it for you. If you haven't already subscribed to our channel, please do. We would love you to be a subscriber. Click the little bell and you'll be notified when there's new videos coming up. And if you could all give me a big thumbs up and say you like this video, I would be thrilled to mix. And thank you so much. I shall see you on Thursday night. And hmm, Thursday night, I'm planning to do pastrami. Pastrami. Or take you through the steps to do pastrami. pastrami. Um, that's my plan. It could all go pear-shaped between now and then, but, you know, Home, there's nothing like homemade pastrami. So have a lovely evening, everyone. Thank you again so much for joining us. And I shall see you on Thursday. Bye.